Hello, and welcome to Geek Out with Perry. In previous episodes, we've talked about large, low-cost mailboxes. In this episode of Geek Out with Perry, we'll talk about the technology that allows administrators to be able to move these large, low-cost mailboxes without impacting the end user. In Exchange 2010, we introduced Mailbox Replication Service. So how is this different from how we've done moves in previous versions of Exchange? All right. Well, the Mailbox Replication Service is our improved move mailbox system, right? So uh, okay. move, moving mailboxes about managing your system. If you've got hardware replacements or upgrades or need to do some load balancing, you need to move mailboxes around. Mm -hmm. In previous versions, mailboxes tended to be quite small. Um, the amount of time uh, it took to do it was uh, both a small latency on a particular move, so the impact on user end users wasn't very big, and the total amount of data was pretty small, so you could pretty much schedule this off hours and, and take care of it and not impact end users. With the advent of very large mailboxes, multi-gigabyte, tens of gigabytes, uh, taking a mailbox offline doesn't accept, uh, wasn't really acceptable, and it prevented you also from taking advantage of working hours to, to, to manage the system. So the single biggest improvement uh, that you get from MRS is that it's all online. From an end user perspective, the moves are asynchronous to them. Right? Uh, we're getting the data replicated in the background, and then we do a final failover. So that's the replication part. It's not just a move. We are doing a replication scheme behind, behind the scenes. Okay. So how does this process work? So the other part of the name, the, the service part, is also uh, a big improvement for uh, IT pros. With the old move mailbox system, you'd have a console, you'd initiate it. If the console went down, you're, you'd have to restart and redo all the moves. Mm -hmm. If the server you were targeting went down, if there was a glitch on a hard drive, you'd have to clean up and restart all the moves. And, and uh, same thing with any of the other infrastructure that was going through. But uh, the cool thing about MRS is that it's actually a service that's running on all the CAS servers. Okay. Okay. And uh, if the IT pro sends in a request to initiate uh, a move mailbox, uh, so a new move uh, uh, move request comes in. Um, the MRS system will pick it up and put an entry in the AD indicating that there's a set of mailboxes with a certain set of parameters that need to be moved from here to there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that makes it uh, that piece of data is then reliable. From then on. Uh, the, the console is essentially in and uh, gets a response saying, yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, we've got your request and we're gonna, we're gonna do the moves. Mm -hmm. Then uh, a particular uh, MRS uh, service on one of the CAD servers picks up a set of mailboxes uh, and then uh, initiate, it finds where they are and uh, the targets and starts moving them. So uh, database A is one, uh, database one that's active is found on this mailbox server, and its target is database two, which is also active here. And uh, we start basically moving uh, data and replicating um, data between the, those two servers. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is controlled by the MRS. And it throttles it so that uh, the amount of, if you're doing many moves in the same time, the, uh, we don't allow uh, the uh, content replication that's protecting the, the, the databases to fall behind, won't let uh, CPU get too high, okay. uh, and that sort of thing. So uh, you can uh, not have to worry about uh, running this during uh, um, business hours. The, the system will continue to perform and we'll be able to use up spare capacity on the system throughout the day okay. as the, the peaks and, and valleys go on. But let's say we lose a mailbox server. Yep. Okay, well, that mailbox server is going to fail over or even just the individual spindle in the background to, so one, uh, the, one of the replicas, the one P, is going to become the new active mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to become a, up on live. There's going to be a break in the moves, okay. but then when the server is back online 30 seconds later, uh, this MRS server is going to pick it up and then um, uh, uh, continue on from where it was. Oh, great. Okay. Um, while this is all going on, you have many, many moves going on that you've scheduled. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can always query for status uh, across all the moves, see the percentage replicated, yep. and uh, get a good idea of when it's going to be complete and the set that are finished and the set that are, have still got stuff to do. Even if we lose this CAS uh, front end, uh -huh. um, again, the moves, there's a certain amount of data that's been moved over, let's say 70%. Mm -hmm. You don't have to restart. 
uh, one of these other CAS servers is going to uh, pick up the fact that nobody is handling this, the, 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 the move that's been uh, set up in AD okay. and then pick up responsibility for that. Uh, and at that point, essentially, you can uh, conceptually imagine that um, the, uh, all right, and we'll just continue on for where it left off. So the system stays robust in the face of any of the particular failures. So you can set up a batch of moves that's going to last for several days, um, not worry about having to uh, uh, keep stopping it because uh, you're running into peak hours. The system will naturally throttle itself. It'll deal with any failures in the system pretty much auto automatically. And as a result, you can get an awful lot of content uh, moved through. Now this is allows you to, you can do all this with an upgrade from Exchange 2007, as long as you've installed uh, um, the latest service packs. Okay. And, and, and going forward, this is uh, going to remain. So any future upgrades will take advantage of this as well. Great. Um, so how does this also benefit Exchange Online customers? Essentially, uh, we designed the system to work uh, across the internet. Uh, it's necessary even on premise, uh, cross forest, uh, cross data center moves are important to be able to do on premise. But then the same system basically is what's used for migrating content up to up to uh, the data center. So again, you can set your your provision your target set of mailboxes and start this background replication. And when they're completed, the user gets uh, uh, switched over automatically. So you can literally uh, switch from running a set of your mailboxes on premise to in the cloud, and not have any downtime impact on your end users. That sounds great. Thanks, Perry. And thanks for watching. Keep on sending us that feedback and stay tuned for more episodes with Geek Out with Perry.